You're watching Empowerment for Life with Linda Carr, empowering your mind, body, and spirit. And now your host and producer, Linda Carr. Welcome to the Empowerment for Life show. I'm your host and producer, Linda Carr. I have a very special guest today. Her name is Paige Cruz. Welcome to the show, Paige. Thank you. Glad to be here. All right. Now, Paige is from Next Level Fitness, and um, she has a wealth of knowledge that she would like to um, just enlighten us with. So, Paige, tell us a little bit about your background. Okay, sure. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in health promotion mm -hmm. and uh, with a minor in nutrition, and I also have a master's degree in public health. Um, so, I've been working in the health and wellness and public health field for about almost 10 years now, um, and my husband and I, almost mm -hmm. three years ago, we opened um, Next Level Personal Training in Kannapolis, North oh, Carolina. Oh, that's awesome. How's mm -hmm. that going for you? It's going really good. That's it's going good. Really that's good. good. So we're here to talk about, um, of course, healthy lifestyles, mm -hmm. and everyone has different opinions on what a healthy lifestyle is, is like. So what are the components of a healthy lifestyle? Well, essentially, to keep it simple, uh, in order to be healthy, you mm -hmm. need to put good things in your body. Right. You need to move enough and, and not stay sedentary. So you need to be physically active. And also um, things like getting enough sleep and water. I mean, those are kind of the basics. And then depending on um, someone's goals from that point, then there's different factors that are involved. But overall, it's really just about um, keep moving and eat good things. Okay. Well, there are some people that you know, I know a lot of couch potatoes, and they don't feel compelled to do anything but just watch TV and movies all day. Mm -hmm. So some are retired, some are not retired, and um, they do not see the benefits of that healthy lifestyle, you know, going walking or even meditating and things mm -hmm. of that nature. So what, what would you say to someone, you know, that are having those issues with getting over that mindset? Well, I think, um, I mean, there's so much research, first of all, that's been, that's proven how mm -hmm. good this is for us, not just physically, not just appearance-wise, but in order to prevent chronic diseases like heart disease, stroke, mm -hmm. diabetes, which is so prevalent in our society right now. Um, but the, the benefits that it has on your, your emotions, your, your, Ooh. your mental health and, and just the way you feel, I mean, it reduces depression and it just makes people happier all the way around when they're, when they're healthy. And so, mm. um, you know, but if you look at the statistics of, of how many people in this society particularly have heart disease and are struggling with diabetes and, and issues like that, those are a hundred percent, well, those are largely preventable. Mm. I truly believe that. I'm thinking because we've been told or, you know, or taught that Everything that we have is inherited, you know, mm -hmm. from our grandma or our, our mom or dad or something like that. And um, I, I just refuse to believe that everything is hereditary. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, family history and uh, genetics do play a role in, in health and some of these diseases. But at the same time, mm -hmm. you don't have to be victim to that. You can make changes. You can, I mean, in, in with modern medicine and, mm -hmm. and things that are, if you're, if your family, everyone had high cholesterol, well, you may be prone to have high cholesterol, mm -hmm. but there are still things that you can do to keep it right. under control to prevent potentially having an, an episode of something you terrible. You know what? I do believe that. I think it's all about even being proactive, you mm -hmm. know, having a proactive mindset, meaning, you know, if you already know that you have these red flags in your family, high blood pressure, or you have someone, you know, they're known prone for cancer, yeah. just those different things of that nature. You, there are things that you can do. There are right. things you can take. You know, you can meditate. You can go walking. You can mm -hmm. go jogging, you know, and, and it all starts with a changing of your mindset. Absolutely. Changing yes. of your mindset. Yes. And then you change your mind, not to go back to it, but to keep it, keep uh -huh. it focused. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So um, with that being said, what are some of the essential foods that we should consume on a daily basis? Well, there's the categories of foods when you, when you talk about what we need to consume. And mm -hmm. I have, um, this is called my plate. This is um, kind of what we use now to describe what we should eat and what our plate should look like. So the, now, is that a little bit different from what they had in the past? Uh, it was formerly called uh, My Pyramid or the Food Guide Pyramid, yes. and now it's transitioned into My Plate. So you actually see how it looks on a plate. So okay. the really the, the foundation of our diet should be whole grains, fruits, and vegetables. Okay. Um, there's also lean protein, which is important, mm -hmm. and then dairy for things to make sure we get our calcium. But really the base of our diet, um, the, the key 
foods that we need to eat every mm -hmm. single day are fruits, vegetables, um, and, and whole grains. You know, people are all talking about carbohydrates nowadays as mm -hmm. low carb or carbs bad, are they good? Well, um, there are different types of carbohydrates. And mm -hmm. if you get your carbohydrates from whole grain sources, um, such as you know whole wheat and mm -hmm. things that haven't been processed, then that's what we were meant to use as our source of fuel. But so many things are processed nowadays and you have all the white flour and white bread mm -hmm. and that's what's not really good for us. So give us some examples of good proteins, good grains, good fruits and, and vegetables. Some people they overdose on, <laughs> not really overdose probably is a bad choice of words, but um, you know just intake too much of protein or, or, mm -hmm. or, or vegetables and you got to have to find that balance I guess is what I'm trying right. to say. Right, yeah, it's all about balance. Um, essentially all fruits and vegetables are good. Okay. There's not really a bad fruit or a bad vegetable. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to protein, lean sources are always best. So your protein is going to come primarily from animal products, so from beef, okay. pork, chicken, fish, um, and then it also comes from beans and nuts mm -hmm. um, and some legumes. And so a lot of those can be really high in fat or um, full of other um, um, hormones and things depending on what mm -hmm. the source is. So you can, uh, the best sources are lean white meat chicken, for example. Okay. Fish is an excellent source. Um, and then lean cuts of pork and beef. Okay, so as far as dairy is concerned? Now, dairy, you obviously don't need uh, a huge amount of dairy, but again, that goes back mm -hmm. to, to making sure we get enough calcium, especially for the younger population as they're growing and developing. Okay. Um, you want to make sure that they get some dairy and, and get enough calcium to where they um, aren't at risk for osteoporosis after they get older. So Paige, let me ask you, as far as dairy is concerned, what if there's some people that are lactose intolerant? Mm -hmm. Okay. I am not one, so don't laugh at me. But what if, what what should they do then? Or take some pills? Or well, well, there, well, they do make um, over the counter supplements that you can take before you consume any dairy that mm. will will help you tolerate it. But nowadays, you can go to your grocery store and you can find lactose free dairy milk. Okay. You can um, find soy milk, which is lactose free, and and that's really popular right now. Um, is soy good for you? Well, it, it, it depends on, on the source of soy and it depends on the person, um, but actually the one that's even better and more popular than soy, soy milk is almond milk. Almond milk is oh, kind of good. the, yeah, it's very good for you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't um, come from an animal. It doesn't have lactose and it doesn't have soy because a lot of people um, are sensitive to soy, okay. um, but it also has the, the calcium. So. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So I'll take that from okay. you. Okay. So what about fats? Are there good fats? and bad fats. Yes, there are good fat fats and bad fats. Um, the bad fats, which you probably have heard a lot about in the media, um, mm -hmm. especially the past few years, is going to be your trans fats and then your saturated fat. Okay, can you break those down mm -hmm. for us? Yep. Okay. So fat, when it comes to fat, you can, it's broken down into um, saturated, um, polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, and then trans fat. Okay. So of all those, the good one that you hear about that's heart healthy, that's the monounsaturated. So that's going to come from things like almonds and olive oil uh -huh. and avocados, um, things like that. So that is the heart healthy fat that's good for us. Okay. But now when you talk about saturated fat, that's kind of the fat mm. that's got all the yucky stuff in it that's going to clog mm. our arteries and increase risk of heart disease and cholesterol. Is that the type of fat that people say it just tastes oh so good? Well, uh, <laughs> it, it's in a lot of things that people say just tastes oh so good. So like, you know, your Crisco and your oh. uh, your um, full fat butter and, and things. things like that. Oh. Um, and then the trans fat, that's the one that's been banned from a lot of things nowadays, but mm. it, that fat's been put through a process. Um, they use what's called hydrogenated oils, okay. and, and that process um, changes the way the fat, the, the texture of the fat. So you've got butter, well then they want to make margarine, which is not as solid as butter. It's, it right, melts easier, right, it spreads right. easier, but they've got to put it through a process in order mm -hmm. to get it that way. And so then the fat becomes that trans fat, which they found really puts people at risk for um, right. heart disease and, and things like that. Well, let's see um, my favorite item here. Yes, well, <laughs> I've, I brought a 
fat model. So yes. this, um, now we were talking about dietary fat. Well, this is what five pounds of body fat oh, look looks that. like. Oh my gosh. And what it feels like. So it you can, yeah. Like. So this is what wow. a lot of us have a lot of excess of. Um, and we need, we need some fat. I mean, yeah. all of us need some fat, but the problem is when we don't eat the right foods and we aren't active and we get too many of these sitting all over our bodies and that's when it becomes really unhealthy um and you know if you feel feel that i mean I that's just that. five pounds oh my. so if someone loses five pounds and it's actually healthy oh, weight loss fat. and they lose fat think about the pressure that just that alone would take off your your knees or you can just tell by mm -hmm. looking at it that it, it it's sticky and it's, it can stick right to your arteries in the inside yeah, absolutely which causes yes it, yeah that's what so causes many your your oh heart goodness. disease, your strokes, your diabetes, yeah. lots of problems. Oh my goodness. So while we're talking about fat, let's just move on a little bit to sugar intake. Mm -hmm. What type of effect can that have? Is, it, is there a positive or negative or, or Well, um, refined sugar, which mm -hmm. is in a lot of the white breads and kind of the cookies and the cakes and things like that, yeah. that's the kind that's really not good for us. Um, a little bit's okay, but when it's found in so many things nowadays, mm. and when that kind of sugar hits your bloodstream, mm. the the effects that it has on your your blood glu glucose and your insulin levels, that's why we're seeing a lot more of the type two diabetes, oh. um, because people are just taking in way too much of that bad sugar, and their their body really can't handle it, and so their mm. natural response to nor to sugar gets kind of corrupted and then they no longer can produce the things that need to be produced to process it. So that's why a lot of people have to go on insulin. So basically it's like we're pl placing something within our body that really is not supposed to be there, like the artificial type thing? Right, yes, and too much of so it. So all natural, like something coming from um, fruit. Right. Like that, yep. that, that will be okay. Yes, right. yes. I mean, like because that. there's sugar, there's fruit mm -hmm. sugar, there's milk sugar, there's sugar and lots of things. I mean, sugar, there's different types of sugar, and right. it's kind of the, the refined sugar that's really going to um, get in your system and just spike your, your glucose and your insulin levels. That's the kind that's not. So what about Good. different beverages? Talk to us about different beverages. I'm trying to go somewhere with this. Yes. Well, when it comes to beverages, mm -hmm. um, my rule of thumb, a lot of the clients that we do with, they're trying to lose weight. Right. And right. my advice is try not to get your calories from beverages. If you're mm -hmm. watching your weight, you need to limit calories. Yeah. Well, if I'm limiting calories, then I want to get something that I can, you know, chew up and taste and swallow that's going to make me full right. versus, you know, drinking a, a soda that's just, that's just 150 or whatever, maybe empty calories that didn't fill me up, but mm. yet I put that in my body mm -hmm. and the as the excess calories add up, that's when we get the, the that buildup of fat. So, yeah, so beverages, um, water is always is the best. Um, you just really need to watch the sugar and the calories and, and you know and the caffeine and things and, and other drinks that just too much is not good. Okay, so what does a healthy body look like? Because I know sometimes people think just because, you know, you see someone thin and they're jogging, whatever, that they're in, in the best of health, and that's not necessarily the case, mm -mm. correct? Right. In terms of what a healthy body looks like, mm -hmm. um, there, the spectrum is so broad. It depends yeah. on the person. It, there's so many different body types. Mm. Um, so two people can look very different. Like you said, you can have a thin person mm -hmm. and then someone who has more meat on their bones, and that person may have, in fact, a lower uh body fat percentage hmm. where the thin person you know maybe they uh, don't have a lot of muscle and so they may be thin but their mm -hmm. body fat's high and then that can lead to a lot of, of health issues so um, wow. you know we all need a certain amount of fat on our bodies you know you see a lot of models and things nowadays and they just they're just too thin and that's not healthy and young girls that's unfortunately so strive to, to be that way um, not so. only with models now, like for instance, you'll have like seniors, you mm -hmm. know, when they get older, you know, their their frame is smaller and then they, they don't have enough fat and so they go and make a little fall and it's like, mm -hmm. oh no. Right. You know, so if right. they were, even though, you know, sometimes your calcium may be a little depleted, um, you know, they have a little fall and, and they end up breaking a lot of bones. Yes. You know? That happens a lot, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So, is there a such thing as healthy weight? Yes, there is a healthy weight. It kind of goes back to what a healthy body looks like. There's not, okay. you know, one set healthy weight for, say, 30 to 40 year old women. It depends mm -hmm. on your height. It depends on your bone structure. It depends on a lot of things. So um, we tend to coach more about your body fat percentage oh. over 
a number on the scale because the number on the scale, I mean, muscle weighs more than fat. So mm -hmm. you can, you might have a, what someone may think is a high number on the scale, mm -hmm. but that person could have a very low body fat percentage and that could be all healthy weight. Mm. Wow. Well, see, like with me, I do need to lose a couple of pounds. I, I, I will admit, you know, um, you know, you have the holidays that came and went. And oh yeah, those are tough. Came and went again. You <laughs> might have a birthday or two. <laughs> And so with that being said, um, you know, should I go by the chart at my doctor's office? Because, you know, everyone's like, you know, but they go to the doctor for various reasons, of course. And, you know, every time I go over there and I look at it and it's all over there on the wall, it's like it's taunting me. It's just mm -hmm. like, you're 5'1", Linda, and you're supposed to be... You know, at this weight, I'm like, mm -mm -mm. yeah. I'm like, I weighed that when I was in high school. And right. I see a lot of that. Anymore. I see a lot of of you know, we we use charts at at our business where mm -hmm. it says you know healthy weight ranges, but then I'll have someone walk in the door and I'll look at what the range says and I'll look at them and they would probably look pretty sick if they got down to that weight. So I you know, know it really I depends know I would on look the person. Sickly. But you know, those are based on norms and averages. So. Um, but again, body fat and body mass index are kind of more of the key indicators that are better to go by. Okay, well that's that's a good start. That's a good start. So let's um, shift a little bit and let's talk about um, detoxing. Okay. And my my question in regards to detoxing, I don't I don't think it's altogether a bad thing. Um, I know some friends of mine, and I've done it before. I'm not sure whether I did it right. Mm -hmm. You can correct me on that. But um, they do it like maybe twice a year. Some people do it three times a year. And there's colonics and different things. Can you kind of break it down for us? Well, when it comes to detox, uh, personally, I, I I think it boils down to a lot of personal preference. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people like to fast based on their religion, mm. which you know that that's up to that person. It's their prerogative. Right. Um, Overall, though, if you think about detox in terms of fasting, mm -hmm. fasting on a regular basis or for too long a period of time is, is not good for you. It's going to put your body in a fight or flight mode and oh, your, your yeah. survival mode is going to kick in and your metabolism is going to go down so that when you go back to eating normal, mm -hmm. your body's going to burn calories less efficiently, which can lead to weight gain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, and it really just depends on the product. You know, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff out there that people <laughs> do to, to detox that. Um, you know, isn't necessarily good, but th but there's so many things. I mean, any, but if they someone stand was, by their brand and they guarantee us. That well, it's good a lot for of that, a lot of the marketing, um, <laughs> they can say things, but then you read the little print and it'll say not <laughs> FDA, not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. So, you know, you just have to be careful and make that's sure you're so something true. with natural ingredients. That's that's so true, and it's so funny you should say that because even. Even if it's the fact of I'm um, looking at the box for for a, de a good detoxing, you have to look at the labels of even the foods that you you partake of. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So we all need to learn how to read our labels. And I learned that the hard way. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been consuming this much salt, this much sugar, and I, right. I really didn't know. Absolutely. So, yes. so it's always good to get a, a good refresher. So um, what about exercise? Exercise is very, very important, mm -hmm. and not just uh, for someone who's trying to lose weight, but as we talked about before, in terms of just being healthy overall. You need to keep moving. You need to have muscle tone, you know, for so many different reasons, and it's just, there's so many benefits. I could be here all night if, if I named them all, but um, we tell our clients if they can get in 45 to 60 minutes of exercise yeah. most days of the week, so, you know, ideally um, four to five How days a week. <laughs> 45 to 60 of, of at least moderate intensity exercise. So per week. 45 to 60 minutes most days of the week. So oh, if you can okay. exercise for 45 that. minutes to an hour on four days a week or more, then you would, you would be good. But now you need to give yourself at least one day rest. You know, mm -hmm. some people kind of overdo it and, and you have to give your body that time to recover or else you're really doing more harm than good. Mm. Um, so four to six days but I mean we're, we're happy if people are come into us and they've been mm -hmm. sedentary and not done anything and they just start with just even one day a week and then we can work them up to two and three then then they're gonna see so many benefits. So Paige let me ask you this what would you do if someone was struggling in regards to getting motivated with the exercising thing what are some some things that they can do to well ahead of time? People you know when it comes to the change cycle people have to be at that ready point. They have to be ready to change. They can't be 
forced to do it. So, you know, and, and when it comes to motivation, I've, mm -hmm. you know, that in, in our business, we've found that our model it is really helpful because of the level of accountability and mm -hmm. coaching and motivation that we provide as trainers mm -hmm. versus, um, you know, nothing's wrong with getting a gym membership by any means, but you almost have to already have that, that motivation piece because you're the one who's got to motivate yourself to go and then when you get there you gotta mo know what to do and motivate yourself to do it correctly um, so are you saying they got to get rid of all their cookies other snacks no <laughs> not at all not at all I believe in everything in moderation okay that's good yes that's I, do, good. I tell people if you love something do not deprive yourself it's just about just not overdoing it oh, you're so to funny you sound mouth. just like me because um, when of course I first started trying to get the poundage off and everything you know I was just like man, I really want that piece of cake. And when I came back, you know, down south, I'm from the north and I came down south, you know, I have this thing about homemade cakes. It just drives me out of this world. Mm -hmm. So I have a friend, they're just like, no, I can't even eat that. And I'm just like, well, I'm gonna eat what I wanna eat. I'm mm -hmm. just gonna do it in moderation. I'm like, that's not gonna work. And we're, just, we're like, you know, going, we're warring against each other because one wants to do it one way, uh -huh. just cold turkey. And with me, you know, I'm trying to <laughs> piecemeal uh -huh. my, I'm trying yeah. to reduce my, pl reduce my plate yeah. and drink more water and just get a little more active, just, you know, gradually. Mm -hmm. I won, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not surprised. I yes. won. Yes. Yeah. Well, I tell everyone there's no one size fits all nutrition plan. It depends on the person. But from my experience, you're more likely to binge later if Ooh. you deprive yourself of something you love because mm -hmm. you end up kind of rebelling against yourself and wanting it even more and then you just dive into that cake and eat the whole cake <laughs> versus if you could have just had a little bite here and there when you wanted a little bite yes. it wouldn't be as bad okay so. well i tell you what we're going to take a brief bait a break page okay. and we'll be right back all right you're watching empowerment for life with linda carr we'll be right back did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. Totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. You're watching Linda Carr's Empowerment for Life. And we are back with Paige Cruz with um, Next Level Training, and she's just dropping us some nuggets. And uh, we're so delighted to have her. Now, Paige, when we're on break, we were just talking about, you know, detoxing and healthy weight and things of that nature. So I want to know this personal question because some, me and some of my guy friends, I have a lot of guy friends and a lot of female friends, and we're going back at it, back and forth. You know, it was getting ready to be, you know, spring. We're at spring now. Mm -hmm. And um, do men lose weight quicker than women? Unfortunately, a lot of times they do. A lot of times they do. Men, not, not always, but mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, men have more muscle mass, and mm -hmm. the more muscle you have, the higher metabolism you're going to have. Is that so? Mm -hmm. yep. So that's the yep. trick. That's why they say yeah. it's important to do strength training and not just cardio exercise, because you may burn mm -hmm. more calories in a cardio exercise session than you would in a strength session. But after the strength session, you're going to burn more calories throughout the rest of the day. 
because you're building up that muscle and muscle yeah, muscle burns more calories than fat. So men, that's why a lot of times they end up having a, a higher metabolism in a lot of cases. Yeah, they're sneaky. Mm. See, that's that's why you guys have been losing a lot more weight than us because you're you, you got that muscle max thing going. And hormones on too. They've got hormones that help them with that. Where and, we and you hear you, you guys have hormones too. So don't say that we're hormonal <laughs> and things of that nature because we're not. <laughs> but anyway, um, I believe that everything in the body is connected. Mm -hmm. You know, when you know when someone says their head is hurting, they have an earache, but I'm like, well, you know, they're both connected. They're both hurting at the same time. So, how does all of um, that relate to chronic diseases? Well, um, everything we've been talking about is directly connected to many preventable or largely preventable chronic diseases. Yeah. Your big ones are your heart disease, mm -hmm. um, stroke, diabetes, and some forms of cancer. Um, tons of people nowadays have issues with high cholesterol and high blood pressure. Why do you think and that is? At lifestyle factors mostly, that some lifestyle, genetic, but it, mostly it lifestyle, the way you. people eat and they don't exercise. Mm. Um, what's scary about those is they call them the silent killers. Mm. The reason is because if you have those, you typically can't feel it and you can't see what's going on. Wow. And I like to show our clients this model because I feel like it really helps describe that because you know someone can say yeah I have high blood pressure but mm -hmm. you know I feel fine well if you have if you're eating a terrible diet and lots of fat and you've got high cholesterol mm -hmm. this is what a healthy clean artery looks like so our arteries okay. now this one is one with plaque buildup, oh my gosh. which happens over time of having high cholesterol that's uncontrolled and in eating bad things, this, this plaque substance builds up. Well, what happens then, so these red things are the way our blood should flow through the arteries. Okay. Well, you see how freely they flow through the clean artery. Yeah. Well, what's happening oh, here? They get stuck. They get stuck. And so when it gets to the point where they cannot move through that, mm. that's when you have a blockage. That's when you have maybe a heart attack or a wow. stroke. And so that's why I tell people it's so important to know those numbers, keep them under control because, mm. y again, it's not something you see or feel, but this is what's going on and it's very, very that dangerous. That is like so amazing. I'm mm -hmm. so glad you, you brought that sample because it's so simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, so it's simple a really to good way to visualize. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not, I think a lot of people, um, when, when they get things, things going wrong with their life or what have you, whether it's a headache, a migraine, you know, tummy ache or whatever, you know, they take it lightly. They take things for granted. But mm -hmm. You really need to be in touch with your body, being in tune with your body, mm -hmm. and so you can, you can recognize those signs, those red flags. Right. So um, let me ask you this, Paige. Um, mm -hmm. um, where does sleep fit in there? Well, sleep is kind of one of those key foundation mm -hmm. uh, things. We need to get enough sleep. We need to make sure we're hydrated, so getting enough water, mm -hmm. um, the eating the right foods, and the exercise. So, you know, you you can eat good mm -hmm. and exercise, but if you're not getting enough sleep, then your body is, is eventually going to shut down in some areas and you're not going to be as uh, efficient. So so what is like a basic amount of sleep? Is it like six hours, eight hours? Depending on the person mm -hmm. and the age, you know, children need more sleep, but usually around six to eight hours six is, eight is hours. sufficient. Yep. Okay. So what advice would you give someone that is struggling and trying to lose weight or just trying to find that balance? You know, we're so busy. You have moms, you have you know, dads, and mm -hmm. you know, we're just trying to make it happen. You know, there's ways to sneak it in. You don't have to mm -hmm. have a personal trainer. You don't have to have a gym membership, but you can do little things like park further away at the store. That's good. Take the stairs instead of the elevator. Mm -hmm. You know, just um, cut back little things here and there to mm -hmm. reduce your calories, and, and eventually that will all add up. Well, thank you so much, Paige Cruz, for coming to the Apartment for Life show with Linda Carr. We'd love to have you back again just to drop yeah. all those good nuggets. And maybe we can talk her husband into coming down and give me some pointers on some exercise Absolutely. that can help me get my weight down, yes. too. Yes, <laughs> we would love to. But thank you so much again. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching Empowerment for Life with Linda Carr. For more information about the show, be sure to visit our website at www.lindacarrtv.com.